How's it, everyone? Welcome back to a new episode of Extra Turns. We got a very special one for you today. We have brand new decks built around some of the Warhammer legendary creatures. Uh, we got some excellent guests in the house. We got Rachel Weeks coming back. We've got Jordan Jamie, one of our writers, who you have never seen on the show before. So really excited for that one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're also big Warhammer 40k nerds. So oh, yes. they know all about the lore <laughs> and things like that. I'm sure they'll make jokes about it. It's also an epic game. This is our longest episode of Extra Turns ever. It's long. Look at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the time down below. You know, long. that's a really swinging, exciting game. A lot of twists and turns. Before we get into it, if you want to build any of these decks or see any cards in this episode that you like, well, you know you got to go to cardkingdom.com slash command to pick that stuff up. That is the best place to go to get your magic products, singles, anything at all. You know your magic players. You're going to buy magic cards. You may as well use our affiliate link, cardkingdom.com slash command. And Card Kingdom, we're so happy to be back with them. They were our sponsor for years and years and years. And they really are the A-plus, number one, service-oriented magic retailer in the business card kingdom just gets you your cards the fastest they send out your cards almost at an insane speed literally yesterday we were on set jimmy ordered a bunch of cards while we were working and then less than a couple hours later he's like look it already shipped like it is so fast so if you need to get your cards quickly let's say you're going to magic 30 or something which is mm -hmm. right around the corner well card kingdom is the only place i would trust to get me my cards fast enough again card kingdom dot com slash command that's the place to go to get the cards you need and support the content you enjoy which is the command zone of course yes and once you get those cards well you probably need some accessories to go with them you need card sleeves you need deck boxes and the best place to go get those is ultrapro.com we have an affiliate code ultrapro.com slash commands ultrapro has all the best stuff they've got all the best deck boxes all the best sleeves the eclipse sleeves i started uh, re-sleeving some of my decks especially for magic 30 i got some new eclipse sleeves and oh there's no better feeling than and shuffling brand new clip sleeves it's absolutely the best and like butter it's like butter just whoo, glides right across excellent shuffle feel yeah ultra pro just has like the best stuff to protect your game pieces yeah they are the ones we here at the commands would trust our own collections too so you know that they really will protect your cards and again i like that if you want to get all dressed up all dressed in press so you can look really good at something like magic 30 mm -hmm. ultra pro is gonna make your stuff also look the best not just protect it again ultrapro.com slash command and then of course the final way to support all of our content is just directly go to patreon.com slash command zone. You can contribute to our channel directly. You get all kinds of cool perks. Patrons get to do things like watch extra turns and game nights earlier than the general public. They also get access to our discord server. We play spell table games. Murphy, oh, you yeah. play spell table games with the patrons. I play spell table games with the fun. patrons. Jimmy's been playing lady Ashlyn, Jake, their whole crew. If you want to interact with us more, ask us questions, hang out with us patreon.com slash command zone is a great way to get all those perks and also support our content. We really appreciate everybody that does that. All right. Now, uh, I already said it was the longest episode ever, <laughs> so we may as well get started. It is a really epic one. So uh, do they have seat belts in space? Uh, maybe. Strap in. Just strap generically in. strap yourselves in. This is, it's a crazy one. Let's go. What's up, everyone? Welcome to a new episode of Extra Turns. As you can tell from the set around me, we're doing something special for this episode. We took some of the new fancy legendary creatures from Warhammer 40K, and we brewed entirely custom decks around them, and now we're gonna battle it out. Hey, everyone, I'm Jamie. I'm a writer here at the Command Zone, and for my very first episode of Extra Turns, I built around Magus Lucia Kane. My commander lets me copy X costed spells. So my goal is to tap her multiple times each turn, then play out a giant X spell and make a whole bunch of copies. With a board full of massive creatures, I'll keep my opponents on the back foot and take over the game. My deck today is led by Celestine the Living Saint. My commander can perform the miracle of resurrection, but only if I gain enough life. So I plan to gain large chunks of life so I can keep recurring my creatures to the battlefield. With a board full of flyers and unstoppable value, I can take over the skies and seize victory. My commander is the leader of the Adeptus Mechanicus, Belisarius Call. Call is the master of machines, so I plan to assemble a complex artifact engine that will allow me to use his abilities over and over again, digging for even more artifacts to deploy. 
Then, once my factory is firing on all cylinders, I'll pump out an army of space marines and conquer the table. And my commander is Magnus the Red. My commander makes all my instants and sorceries cheaper for each creature token I have. So I plan to flood the board early on with a ton of them. That way, once I cast my commander, I can play some big haymaker spells to get super ahead and wipe out my opponents. All right, let's fight. The saints are marching in. Glory to the Omnissiah. He's got red in his name. How can I lose? All right, everybody ready? You betcha. Let's, let's do it. All right, I will draw. I'm gonna start off by playing Minamo, School at Water's Edge, and then passing the turn. Okay, I will draw. Uh, I'll play Yavimaya, Cradle of Growth. Congratulations, you all have forests. Hooray! Oh, <laughs> fellow green players, pass turn. All right, I'll draw for turn and play a High Market, and I'll pass. Sweet. I'll draw for turn, and I'll play an Island. Pass. Okay, draw for turn. We'll play a Plains, and then I am going to play a Felwar Stone. Nice. And pass the turn. I will draw. I will play a Training center, and I will play Sylvan Library. Ooh. I will pass. All right, I'll draw for turn. Play a Radiant Fountain, and I will gain two life. Go to 42, and I'll pass the turn. I will draw for turn. I will play a Mountain, and then I will also play a Felwar Stone. Pass turn. Match. I like the way you start things. All right, untap, upkeep, draw. Play an island, and then I'm going to play my commander, Belisarius Call. Nice. Go ahead. All right, I will untap. On my draw step, I'm going to draw three cards because of Sylvan Library. It's scary. Mm. I will keep all three of those cards, so I will pay eight life. Hey! <laughs> Going to 32. Classic Sylvan Library move. Aggressive librarian. <laughs> <laughs> I will play a tropical island, and then I will play Unbound Flourishing. Uh oh. Gross. And then I pass turn. On your end step, yeah. I am going to plane cycle Angel of the Ruins. <laughs> uh, I'm going to search my library for a planes. I'll reveal it and put it into my hand. All right, I will untap and draw. I will play that planes for turn. Then I'm gonna cast a pearl medallion. Nice. Nice. And then I think we're just gonna pass right there. Okay. I will untap and I will draw for turn. Not a land. Classic Jimmy. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I will tap two and I'll play a talisman of creativity. And then I will tap those two for one in the blue and cast multiple choice where X is equal to one. So I will scry one then draw a card. I put that one on the bottom. Old seven drop. Land. And land. then I will draw a card. <laughs> oh, no. All right, I'll pass turn, Jordan. All right. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'm going to play an Ancient Den, and I'll play an Esper Sentinel. Then I'm going to follow that up by playing a Midnight Clock. Cool. All right. And I'll follow that up by playing the Reality Chip. So I've got like a nice little like set of artifacts out on the battlefield there. Yeah, we know this. Yeah. And I think that's all. Pass turn. I will untap. And then on your upkeep, I will put a counter on Midnight Clock. Then we will go to the Sylvan Library step. Oof. I think I just need one of these, so I'm gonna put two back and pay no life this time. Wowie. Mm. I'm going to play an island, and I am going to cast my commander, Magus Lucia Kane. Uh, I will go to combat. She has a triggered ability to put a plus one, plus one counter on something. She is the only choice, so I will do that. So she is a 2-2, and then I will pass my turn. On your end step, I am going to flash in a Deep Gnome Terramancer. Ooh. Nice. He costs one less because of the Pearl Medallion. Nice. And then I will untap. And on your upkeep, Rachel, Midnight Clock will tick up. And I will draw for my turn. I'm going to pay one and cast an Underworld Cookbook. Are you going to pay the Esper Sentinel trigger? Uh, I cannot. OK, then I will draw a card. And I will pass the turn. Are you missing a land draw? draw? Sure am. Oh, boy. All right, I will untap. And on your upkeep, I will put another counter on Midnight Clock. And then I will draw my card for turn. I will play my land for turn. It's an Odawara Soaring City. Nice. I will tap four or five and then cast my commander, Magnus the Red. Oh. Yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Pass turn to you, Jordan. At the end of your turn, I will tap Belisarius Call and two artifacts to create a 2-2 two -two Astartes Warrior. Oh. And then I will untap for turn. On my upkeep, the Midnight Clock will tick up to four. Tick tock, and I will draw for turn. Then I will play a treasure vault, and I am going to play Padim, Console of Innovation. So I'm going to pay three and play Halo Fountain. Mm. Okay, well that can win him the game. But it doesn't yet. <laughs> and then I'll move to combat and I'm going to attack Rachel with my Astartes Warrior. All right. Uh, before blocks, 
I am going to flash into Cathar Commando. Ooh, nice. And I will block your 2-2 Vigilance. And then before damage, I am going to sacrifice the Cathar Commando. I will destroy the Unbound Flourishing. That happens. All right, then I'll pass turn. Okay. You can copy your X spells one time. <laughs> yeah. What for? Uh, I untap. On your upkeep, I will put a counter on Midnight Clock. Like I do. Uh, I will go to Sylvan Library. Uh, I'm going to keep two of them, putting one back, paying four life. Going to 28. I will play a waterlogged grove, and then I'm gonna tap everything, including my commander, so I will copy the next X spell I cast. Make seven mana total? I have seven mana total. Uh, I am going to play Apocalypse Hydra, X equals five. Hey, I like Apocalypse hmm. Hydra. X was five or more, so that'll enter with 10 counters on it. And then because of my commander, I also get a copy of Apocalypse Hydra, also entering with 10 counters on it. Yikes. 10 tens. Okay. Oh boy. Cool, cool, 20 power. I'll go to combat. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I will put a plus one, plus one counter on my commander. Oh, why not one of the 10 tens? <laughs> <laughs> and I will pass the turn. Okay, I will untap. On your upkeep, I will put a counter on Midnight Clock. It now has six counters on it. And draw a land. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna play planes. Yes. Okay, we solid, did it. Solid, solid. And because my white spells cost one less to cast, I'm gonna cast a fumigate. Oh no, my oh. commander! Okay, in response to your fumigate, I'm going to activate Belisarius Call's second ability, tapping four creatures, so I can look four deep into my library. Three, four, and reveal an artifact. And I will reveal Sicarian Infiltrator and nice. put it into my hand. Oh, I cannot pay for Esper Sentinel. Sweet. And then, because you're not paying the tax, I will draw for Esper Sentinel. Uh, Fumigate will resolve. I'll destroy all the creatures on the board. And I'll put my commander back in the command zone. I will too. As will I. And because there was 10, I will gain 10 life. I will go to 52. That's all I've got. I will pass the turn. Okay. I will untap. On your upkeep, I will put a counter on Midnight Clock. And I will draw my card for turn. Okay. I'm going to tap two and I will cast a Thought Vessel. And then I will tap four and cast Mystic Retrieval, targeting my multiple choice, bringing it back to my hand. Ooh. And I'll pass it to you, Jordan. All right, I will untap all of these. And then on my upkeep, I will tick up the clock. It has eight counters on it. Jordan, what time is it? <laughs> it is eight o'clock and all is well. <laughs> I will draw for turn. Uh, okay, so I'm going to play a Sicarian Infiltrator and I'm going to squad at once. So I'm gonna pay two. Uh, that will make one copy of the Sicarian Infiltrator. So when Sicarian Infiltrator enters the battlefield, I'll draw a card, so I will draw two cards. Um, and then I will play a Planes for turn. And I'm gonna play an Illusionist Bracers, paying two. And then I will pass the turn. I will untap. On your upkeep. It is nine o'clock! <laughs> So it is. I will Sylvan Library. God, you still have that. Yep. Uh, I am going to keep two of the cards, putting one back, and I will pay four life. Going to 24. And then I'll play an Ancient Tomb. Nice. And then I'll play Ristic Study. Gross. Oh, oh no. Sylvan Library and Ristic Study. I'll pay two life with Ancient Tomb for that. Going to 22. I pass turn. Okay. I uh, will untap. On your upkeep, Midnight Clock will tick up to 10. Draw for turn. I'm gonna play a Heliod's Intervention where X is three. Oh, wow, Rachel's that's the best good. player in the game. Uh, <sighs> what are your targets and are you paying for Ristic Study? I'm not gonna pay for Ristic Study. Oh. The targets are Sylvan Library, Ristic Study, and Halo Fountain. Mm, sad. In response, oh. oh God. I'll play Thassa's Intervention, X equals two, so I will counter that spell unless you pay four. I cannot pay four. Oh, rough. So uh, uh, nothing will happen. <laughs> Ugh, devastating. Kind this of is though. devastating. I, I'll admit, I would have rather that resolve. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, for I, sure I get you that would. it's getting rid of my Halo Fountain, but I would rather have that Sylvan Library and Mystic Study. Sure, yeah. Yeah. We'll agree with mm -hmm. you. Okay. Uh, take it away, Jimmy. Well, I am going to untap all of my cards. On your upkeep, Midnight Clock will go to 11. Almost there. Tick tock on the clock, but the party don't stop, no. And then I won't draw for turn. All right, I will play a Fabled Passage as my land for turn. And then I'm gonna kick things off by cracking this Fabled Passage. 
I'll find a mountain and that will come into the battlefield untapped because I have four more lands. So I'm just gonna tap all of my uh, lands and mana and I will recast my commander, Magnus the Red. Uh, I get to draw for Yes, correct? you do get a draw for Rhystic studying. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I will pass the turn, Jordan. Okay, um, I will untap and then on my upkeep, the midnight clock hits 12. Dong. Ding dong. I will float the blue mana in case I have something I really want to spend it on and Midnight Clock will be exiled. And then I will shuffle my hand and my graveyard into my library and draw a new hand of seven cards. Ooh, yikes. Oh crap. Seven lands. Did I nail it? You kind of did. Ooh. Not exactly seven lands, but like but not far. To be fair, Jamie won't draw for Aristic study. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will draw for turn. Well, I am going to play a Flooded Strand and then I will crack it. I will take one damage, going down to 39 and search for a Tundra. Put into the battlefield untapped. And then I guess I will just recast my commander, Belisari Call for six. Rhystic? Yes, I will pay for Rhystic Study. A hero. Uh, I'll move to combat, and then I'm going to send my two Sicarian infiltrators at Jamie. Okay, I can do nothing, so I will take two, going to 20. Go ahead, your turn. Okay, I'll untap. I will Sylvan Library. My life total is low enough. Correct. So I'm just gonna keep one of these cards. I'm gonna put two back and pay no life. Okay. Fair, fair. I am going to play Shatter Skull the Hammer Pass. Ooh. Ooh. And I am going to pay three life so that it enters untapped. Oh man. Oh boy. Scary. So I will go to 17. Big move. I am going to pass the turn. I will have to discard a card. It will be his force. Danger. All right, so something big. Is Bolt going to land on. and then pass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. <laughs> the Whoa. magic number. What are we thinking on, on big old X instance? There's a lot. So you could be drawing cards, you yeah. could just be psych rifting. There's a lot of things you could be doing. Some sort of pull from tomorrow. Okay, I will untap and go to draw for my turn. Uh, I'm going to play Marsh Flats. Well, you know what? Jamie's drawing a lot of cards. You're so right. let's all draw more. I'm going to cast an Anvil of Bowgarden. Um, Oh, I see. Do you pay for Rhystic setting? I will pay for Rhystic on that one. And then I'm gonna crack my Marsh Flats. Going to 51. And I'm gonna search my library for basic plans. Boop. And put it onto the battlefield untapped. Then I will use that plans to cast a Lightning Greaves. This one I cannot pay Rhystic study. Cool, I'll draw. I'll pass the turn to you, Jimmy. I'm gonna untap all my stuff, and then I'm gonna go to my draw step. Anvil of Bogardin will trigger, so I will draw two cards, and then I will discard a Salundi Vision into my graveyard. Okay, uh, I will play Bloodstained Mire as my land per turn. I'm gonna go to combat, and Rachel, you are at 51, that and I'm afraid me. of all this open mana, so I will swing at you for four in the air with Magnus the Red. All right, I have no blocks. I will take four. <laughs> and go to 47. And that's gonna trigger my commander, which means I get to put a 3-3 red spawn creature token onto the battlefield. Hey. Okay, uh, I'm going to tap my Felwar Stone for red and cast Forbidden Friendship for just a red mana because I have a creature token. Will you pay for Rhystic? Uh, I am not gonna pay for Rhystic study. I'll draw this card. Forbidden Friendship will resolve and I'll make a dinosaur as well as a soldier token. So now I have three creature tokens on the battlefield. Josh and his favorite dinosaur. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, I'm gonna crack my Bloodstained Mire. I'll pay one life going to 39. <laughs> and I'll find a volcanic island. And then I'm going to tap for a blue and a colorless and cast multiple choice again, where X is equal to four. Rhystic study? I'll pay one. Got it. And uh, X is four or more, so I'm gonna do all of the above on multiple choice. So I will scry one, then draw a card. Let's put that on the bottom of my library and then draw a card. And then Jordan, you need to return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Great. I will return a Sicarian Infiltrator to my hand. <laughs> And then I will create a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token, which I'll signify with this sleeve here. Okay, I'm then going to tap blue and blue and cast Muse Vortex for four. Okay. And I'm not gonna pay for Rhystic Study. Okay, I'll draw. All right, I will exile the top four cards of my library. One, two, three, four. Uh, I exiled these four, only one instant or sorcery in there, but I will cast it, it's Hordling Outburst. Scary. And the rest of these cards go on the bottom of my library in a random order. I did cast this, so that means, Jamie, you may draw a card up for six study. I will do so. Sorry, friends. Ah! Um, so I will make 
three one one red goblins. And then I will tap red red and I will cast Descent of the Dragons and target <laughs> all of my creatures, except for my commander. And so for each creature destroyed this way, I put a four four red dragon creature with flying on the battlefield instead. On that cast, Ristic Terry will trigger and I can't pay. So Jamie, you can draw the card. I will draw a card and then I am going to respond. Okay. I will cast Klaus Will X equals four. Oh. Sad. Four damage to each creature without flying, which is why I had to do this now. Ooh, instant speed damage wipe. I'm into it. I don't control my commander, so I can't choose both. Okay. So I'm only going to do that. And I won't take damage from Ancient Tomb because I'm using it as a forest, thanks to Yavimaya. Okay. Well, there goes my whole sweet, sweet board. And I just have my commander left. Oh my god, poor Belisari's call. Eight mana? You made a good effort. Okay, well, uh, I will pass the turn then to you, Jordan, because I have nothing else. All right. That was a pretty sweet turn. That was a pretty yeah. sweet turn. I will untap for my turn. I had a sweet turn plan too, but I needed my commander to survive. So, for Anvil of Book Garden, I will draw two cards, and then I will discard this island. I'm then going to play a command tower. Mm, this doesn't feel great, but I think I'm just gonna have to play my commander for eight. Ooh. <sighs> yeah, not excited about it. Do you pay for Ristic Study? Uh, Bam! Ristic study, baby! <laughs> you got it. Uh, and I will end the turn. Go ahead. All right, I will untap. Okay, this is a bit weird with Anvil and Sylvan Library. But first thing, I just draw my card for a turn. Then, Anvil happens. I will draw a card and discard a card. I do think I will discard one of these, and it will be City of Brass, because I can't imagine wanting to play that. <laughs> then, I will Sylvan Library. I will draw two additional cards. And because my life total is 17, I'm going to keep one in hand and put two back. Paying no life. Very nice. All right. Main phase. Play an island. I'm going to play Moloch X equals five. To pay for it, I have used Ancient Tomb as a forest, so I will not lose life. Moloch will enter the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it. So it will be a 7-7. I will draw a card, and I will choose your commander, Jimmy, as its target to fight. Okay. Well, my commander is dead. Jamie, he did nothing wrong. <laughs> he was just trying to make some dragons. Magnus will not forget. To add insult to injury. No, come on, man. Birds of paradise. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. And I will pass the turn. All right, I will untap. Because of Anvil of Burgarden, I will draw two, and I'm going to discard a Worm Coil Engine. I love that card. For the first time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Celestine, the living saint. We got there. She costs one less because of Pro Medallion. Uh, I am not going to pay for Ristic Study on Celestine. I see where this is going, and I'll draw a card. Uh, I'm going to move to give this nice lady a pair of shoes. Uh, we'll go to combat. I will send Celestine a you, Jamie. I will not block. All right. I will take three, going to 14. I will gain three and go up to 50. And then I will move to my end step and Celestine will trigger. And because I have gained three life this turn, I can return yep. Kather Commando to the battlefield. Bingo, okay, that's a start. Yes, go ahead. Okay, untap all of my stuff. All right, Jimmy, on your upkeep, I am going to pay one and I'm gonna sacrifice the Kather Commando. Targeting the Ristic Study. Yes. It is gone. Okay! Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! And then I will draw a card for turn. Anvil of Bogardin will trigger. I'll draw an additional card. And then I will discard a Girid's Belligerent to my graveyard. And then I didn't draw a land, can't play my commander, and I'm gonna just go ahead and pass the turn. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's bad. All right, I will untap all of these. And then I will draw with the Bogardin trigger, so I get two. And I'm gonna discard an Azorius Chancery. I'm going to play a Deserted Beach as my land for turn, and then I'm gonna play my Sicarian Infiltrator again, and I'm going to squat it twice. So I will play seven. And because of Sicarian Infiltrator's ability, I will make two copies of it. So I draw three cards for that. Pretty good. One, two, three. Um, and then I am going to play Drum Bellower, paying three mana. Ooh, that's oh, good. Well, that's very good in your deck. Then at the end of my turn, I am going to tap Belisarius Call, and two of the Sicarian Infiltrators to make a 2-2 Astartes Warrior. And then I will pass the turn. All right, I will untap. Because of the Drum Bellower, when you untap, all of my creatures will untap as well. Okay, I will do the crazy draw step. I will draw, I will draw for Anvil. I will say goodbye to Stomping Ground. I will Sylvan Library. My life total is low, so once again, I will put two back, paying no life. 
Yep. I'll play Volcanic Island as land for a turn, and then I'm gonna play Sereth the Viper's Fang. Ooh. Ooh okay. Okay. Then I'm gonna pay six using Ancient Tomb just as a forest. I'm going to play Altered Ego X equals two. Oh. So you're gonna create a copy of something? Copy of something. You guys have to decide if you're responding before I tell you what it would be a copy. I, I have no response. I have no response. I have no response. Okay, this is going to be Celestine with two counters on it. Oh, he's gonna get some life back. It's a five, six flying lifelink, uh, and then I'll pass the turn. At the end of your turn, I am going to uh, tap Belisarius Call and two of the Securian Infiltrators, and I will make another Astartes Warrior with Vigilance. All right, I will untap. And I will untap on your untap uh, because of my drum bellower. Oh, I draw two. Uh, that's not land either, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I am going to discard uh, Hazaret's Monument. Okay. Go to combat. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am going to send Celestine at Jordan. So no blocks. I will take three, going to 36. Uh, and I will gain three life because she has lifelink. And then I'm going to cast a trading post. Okay. Oh, okay. And then uh, I'm going to pay one and activate the trading post and discard Vexilis Praetor. I'll gain four more life, going to 57. Wow. And then I will move to my end step and Celestine will trigger. I will target Angel of the Ruins in my graveyard. Oh no, this is terrible. Can you stop it? No. Use her to lose it. Okay, so in response, I'm gonna tap Belisarius Call and six creatures so that I can look six deep into my deck. One, two, three, four, five, six. I will reveal a Mind Stone. Oh no. Mm. And I will put it into my hand. Not the hit I was looking for there. Man. Okay, Celestine's ability will resolve. Uh, and because I've gained seven life this turn, I can return Angel of the Ruins to the battlefield. Yeesh. When she enters, I can exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. And I will target your Commander Jordan and Sylvan Library. No responses here. It's so gone. Three oh, times he has gone back to the command zone. He will cost me 10? Yeah. Oh boy. That is my turn. Take it away, Jimmy. All right, uh, on your end step, I'm going to tap for two, and then I'm going to kick this four times with two red and cast Comet Storm where X is equal to two. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna have five total targets here. I'm gonna target Drum Bellower, two Astartes Warriors, one Sicarian Infiltrator, and then one Birds of Paradise. Are you targeting token or non-token Sicarian Infiltrator? Regular Sicarian Infiltrator. That's fair. All my stuff dies. The bird is bolted. <sighs> okay, and then I will untap and draw my card for turn. Anvil Bogarden will trigger, I'll draw an additional card. Uh, I will discard a Seething Song into my graveyard. And then I will play my land for turn, it's a command beacon, but I'm just gonna tap all nine of my mana and recast my commander. And I'll pass turn to you, Jordan. Okay, this is a sad untap because that should have been happening on your turn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's drum bellows so, no more. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so quiet. <laughs> No drumming, no claw, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just a fountain just drip dribbling into the distance. Okay, so Bogarden is still out, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will draw two. I will discard this Plains to the Ample of Bogarden. I will play a Mystic Gate, and then I'm gonna play a Mind Stone, paying two. And then I will pay two for a Silver Mirror. Then I'm going to play a Fetto Alchemist. Ooh, oh. Having these two. I will play Kelpie Guide. Kelpie Guy! Kelpie Guy, baby. Well. And I will play a Rings of Bright Hearth. Oh my god. One, two, three. Uh, and then I will pass the turn. Okay. With far fewer cards in my hand. I'll untap, I'll draw, and then I will anvil draw. Finally a normal draw step for this monster. Never anvil. Uh, I'll discard Elementalist's palette, and then I'm gonna cast my commander again. Okay. This is only his second time casting his commander. And then, this might be insane. <laughs> I'm gonna tap Ancient Tomb for two, oh. and play some mix Sigma. Okay. I'll go to 12. I'll go to combat. My commander's first ability will trigger. I'll put another counter on this Altered Ego Celestine, and then I'll pass the turn. All right, I will untap, I'll draw two. I'm gonna discard a Charming Prince. Ooh. Okay, I'll go to combat. I'm going to send Celestine in the air at Jordan and Angel of the Ruins in the air at you, Jimmy. Uh, that's a 5-7, I would not like to block, so I'm just gonna take five flying and go to 34. I will not block, so I will take three more commander damage in the air and go to 33. I will gain that life and go up to 60. Then second main, I am going to cast a Suture Priest. Oh. And then I will go to my end step. Celestine's ability will trigger and I will target Charming Prince. Ooh. 
Charming Prince will enter the battlefield and I will target Angel of the Ruins. So it will be exiled out. Uh, that also triggers my Sutra Priest and I will gain one more life. Go to 61. Uh, Angel of the Ruins will return on the next end step, but I'm already at my end step, so it will return on Jimmy's end step. Okay, take it away, Jimmy. Okay, I will untap and I will draw a card and then a second card for Anvil of the Garden. Don't yell at me, internet. I am going to discard a land. Uh, I'll go to combat and Rachel, I'll swing at you with Magnus for four in the air. Uh, I will take four more Magnus commander damage and I will go to 57. When that deals combat damage, that will trigger my commander's ability and I will make a 3 3 spawn token creature. And because of Suture Priest, you lose one. One life for the spawn token. I will go to 33. Uh, I'm going to tap for three mana and cast Notorious Throng. Ooh. So I'm going to create X11 one, one Black Fairy Creature Tokens with Flying, where X Ooh. is the damage dealt to my opponents this turn. That's going to create four Fairy Rogue Creature Tokens, and that's going to trigger your Suture Priest four times, Rachel, so I'll lose another four life. And go to 29. And then I'm going to tap for Red Red, and I'm going to cast Reality Scramble. Ooh. We're transmog. Ooh. Sweet. I'm going to target one of my fairy tokens. All right. All right. So let's reveal until I hit a creature. Here we go. Not a creature. Miss. Not a creature. Miss. Not a creature. Oh, man. You have a lot creature. of non creatures. Not a creature. <laughs> I guess there's only <laughs> five creatures in the deck. I was going to say so. Or a so spell yeah. slinger deck. It's oh, gonna crap. Be what are we expecting? How many then? do you have? Ah! Ah, that's a good one. All right. Okay. That's, Archmage Emeritus has that's been a good hit. One. That is a pretty good one. But that you do lose good. one more life. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's go. I do. Next I'll level go. reality scramble tech. Hey. <laughs> I'll go to 28. Uh, and then I am going to put the rest of these cards on the bottom of my library in a random order. And I'll go to my end step. Because this is the next end step, my Angel of the Ruins will enter the battlefield. And this time I will target Halo Fountain and the Simic Signet. I'm going to respond. Oh, because uh -oh. otherwise I'll lose the mana. I'm going to Chaos Warp your Archmage Emeritus. Hmm. In response, I'm going to tap for two blue mana, and I'm going to cast Sudden Substitution. First things first, yeah. when I cast that spell, Archmage Mary, this is gonna draw me a card, so I will draw a card. And then I will take control of Chaos Warp, and I will give you a spawn creature token. Now that I control Chaos Warp, I'm gonna redirect it and target your Sereth the Viper's Fang. Okay, I'll shuffle this in and get ready to show off a zero zero that will die immediately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let's see it. Thank you, Marvel Snap, for sponsoring this video. Hey, everyone. We've been playing a ton of Marvel Snap recently, and we can't wait to talk about it with all of you. Yeah, actually, we haven't been able to stop talking about it because everyone's playing here at the office. It's a digital card game full of awesome Marvel characters, and it's got all the deep strategy you would love as a Magic player. Which makes sense because it comes from Second Dinner, the game studio created by Ben Brode, who is a designer on Hearthstone and plays a ton of Commander, too. You build a 12-card singleton deck to try and win two of three locations that appear on the board, and the deck building goes super deep. Games last just six turns, and both players make their moves at the same time, so it's fast-paced and easy to jam a bunch of quick rounds. Plus, in the middle of a game, you can snap, snap. which doubles the stakes. It's a unique strategic move that gives you the chance to outplan and outplay your opponents. Yeah, you can use it to get more out of a victory, or you can bluff a strong hand and hope your opponent retreats. Victory. It adds a pretty big layer of complexity, and, and you gotta be really smart when you use it. Wow, you, you really find the mind games in everything, huh? What can I say? Marvel Snap just speaks to me. Marvel Snap is out now in early access on Steam and full release on mobile. Global launch was on October 18th, so you can download the game right now using our link in the description. Bow down, plebs. You are in the presence of the great and goated mistress of the meta, Queen Marchessa! Oh, may she game! <laughs> in my world, if you want to stay on top, you need to know how to play the game. That's why I use Raycon wireless gaming headphones to claw my way up the mythic ladder in League of Lords. Raycon's HyperSync low latency technology connects me seamlessly to any device with no lag, as befitting a monarch. Their optimized gaming mic focuses on my regal voice so that my underlings hear my commands instead of the chattering of my corpus. You, gank midlay. Yes, my queen. Plus, their gaming earbuds are the perfect tool to make my opponents pay without paying too much myself. With Raycons at my side, noobs and smurfs alike shall fear the name Killer Queen MTG. Long may she game! So stay on the winning team and go to buyraycon.com slash extra today to get 15% off your Raycon order. You'll also get $20 off Raycon's gaming earbuds or $10 off their gaming headphones. Plus, this October, Raycon's got special pricing up to $20 off. Don't miss it. That's buyraycon.com slash 
slash extra to score 15% off and even more savings. Again, buyraycon.com slash extra. Hello, I'm Lagrella the Magpie translating today for the greatest legal mind New Capenna has ever known, Falco Spara! Caca! He wants to tell you about Mint Mobile, the premium wireless service that starts at just $15 a month. When Falco first heard of these prices, his keen senses kicked in. There had to be a catch. What's the catch? What's the catch? We put our best solicitors on the case and determined there isn't one. That's right, Mint Mobile sells wireless service online only, cutting the cost of retail stores to pass the savings on to you. They give you the best rate, whether you're buying for yourself or for the whole crime family. And at Mint, families start at just two lines. Gah! Every Mint Mobile plan comes with unlimited talk and text, and you can even keep your number and known associates. With how much you could be saving, it would be criminal not to switch. Exactly. <gasps> I mean, car. To get your new wireless plan for 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash extra. That's mintmobile.com slash extra. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash extra. Okay, I'll shuffle this in and get ready to show off a zero zero that will die immediately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let's see it. Walking bullet. <laughs> yes! It was the one car that put the top. Hip. Oh man! <laughs> pew, pew. That ballista never got to walk. It was definitely a substitution, all right. Do you still lose a life for such a first? I sure do. <laughs> I'll go to 11. And then we resolve Angel of the Ruins, so the two things are exiled. It will finally finish entering the battlefield. Yes. It's a very sad day for Halo Fountain. And my signet is also exiled. And also, my Angel of the Ruins triggers my Suture Priest, so I will gain one life. Click 58. All right, then your turn is over. Then my turn is over. <laughs> We've okay. done it. This took a while. I will untap for turn all in one big thing. And I will draw two for the anvil of Bow Garden. Uh, so I will discard a Spire of Industry. And then I'm going to tap 10, and I'm going to play my commander, Belisarius Call, for 10. Hell See yeah, that? He's worth it. <laughs> That's what I say. Your whole deck needs him. Then, when my commander enters the battlefield, I will lose one for Suture Priest. Going to 32. And then I will play my Adakar Waste as my land drop for turn. I think it's a Darkar. A Darkar Waste. <laughs> a Darkar Waste. I play a Darkar Waste. <laughs> I'm tired of all you fleshy monsters attacking me and wiping my board. I'm gonna tap for five mana, and then I will be improvising for five more. And then I will be playing Organic Extinction, destroying all non-artifact creatures. No! Oh. Jamie, a response? Nothing from me. I I have some responses. Okay. I'm going to pay one and activate my trading post. I'm gonna sacrifice the Charming Prince to return target artifact card from my graveyard to my hand. Uh, I'm going to return Worm Coil Engine to my hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna activate High Market and I'm going to sacrifice the Suture Priest. And I'm gonna gain one life, going to 59. And then all non artifact creatures a die. Uh, my Angel of the Ruins is an artifact, so I get to keep it after the board wipe. And then I will pass the turn. Okay, I will sadly untap. Ooh, Ooh. board wipe city. Board wipe city. Draw for turn, then I will draw my second card for Anvil. I'll discard a Mage Right Stone, and then. I'll pass turn. Whoa, big boy. Scary. I will untap and I will go to draw for my turn and draw an additional one because of Anvil Bow Garden. And I will discard a Mind Stone. Nice. Well, first things first, we cast a Soul Ring. And then um, I'm gonna cast Worm Coil Engine. No response. No response from me. I will move to equip Worm Coil. I will respond to equipping it. Mm -hmm. I am going to tap for nine, and then I'm going to play Dominate. X equals six to take control Instant. of your Worm Coil. That's pretty sweet. Whoa. And I do not have a free sack outlet. That's untapped, cool. Unfortunately, oh. so it will be gained. Okay. And that was I cool move. <laughs> will <laughs> move the boots to Angel of Ruins. Then hit you for five. I will take five. Going to six. That is the most I can do. Go ahead. 
Jamie's right. gotten a lot of life gain out of your deck. Uh, okay, I will untap and then I will draw my card for turn. And I'll draw an additional card for the Anvil. I will discard a Mountain. I will play a Field of the Dead as my land for turn. I do not have the requisite lands. And then I'm gonna tap for eight. And then I'm going to cast Stolen by the Fae. So I'm gonna bounce that Worm Coil Engine right back to Rachel's hand. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was I wanted to go for the Angel of the Ruins. Oh yeah. And then I get to create X one one blue fairy creature tokens with flying, so I'll make six one one fairies. Pretty good. And then I will pass turn to you, Jordan. Alright. I will untap, and then I will draw for turn. Bo Garden is still there. Uh, so I will discard a mirror and spy, then I'll play White Plume Adventurer. Nice. Uh, which means that I get the initiative. And when I get the initiative, I get to venture into the Undercity. Ooh. Have, have a good adventure. Have fun. <laughs> I will, I'll have a great adventure. The first room triggers and I get to search my library for a basic land. I will find this island and put it into my hand. Then I will play that island as my land for turn. Mm -hmm. And then I'm actually going to pay three to equip uh, the Illusionist Bracers to Belisarius Call. At the end of my turn, I'm going to attack my Illusionist Bracers and my Rings of Bright Hearth with Belisarius Call to make a 2-2 Astartes Warrior. And because of the Illusionist Bracers, that ability will be copied. So I'll make two 2-2 two -two Astartes. Pretty scary. I will not pay for Rings of Bright Hearth. And then uh, I will pass the turn. Okay, come on top deck. I will untap, I will draw and draw for Anvil. On your upkeep, I will untap Belisarius Call because of White Plume Adventure. I will discard Path of Ancestry with the Anvil discard. I will play a mountain as my land for turn. And then I'm going to pay three and I'm going to play Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. She'll start with seven loyalty. I think I'm tapping out here anyway, so I might as well down tick her to uh, untap a land. Uh, I'll untap Volcanic Island. I'll pay eight, again using the forest thing to not pay life. I'll cast Turbagon X equals six. It will enter with six plus one plus one counters on it. Uh, when it enters, I will draw two cards, one from its Ravenous trigger and one from a Kiora trigger. Yep. Nice. I'll pass turn. At the end of your turn, I am going to tap Belisarius Call and two of my uh, Sicarian Infiltrators to make two more 2-2 two -two Astartes. All right. I will untap and draw two because of Anvil of Bowgarden. And on your upkeep, Belisarius Call will untap because of the White Plume Adventure. Mm -hmm. I'm going to discard this Windswept Teeth. And I will play Planes. Then I am going to pay six, and I'm once again going to cast Celestine, the living saint. Uh, and I'm going to move to give her a pair of shoes. I am going to go to combat. I'm going to send Celestine once more at Jordan, and I'll send Angel of the Ruins at Jamie. That is going to be no blocks from me. That's going to be nothing from me. All right, we move to damage. Uh, Celestine does three more commander damage. I'll take three going down to 29. And I will take five going to one. Ooh. And because of Celestine's lifelink, I will gain three and go to 62. And because you hit me, you get the initiative. Yay! Enjoy. And I will venture into the Undercity and search my library for a basic planes. Put it into my hand. Uh, and then I will move to my end step and Celestine will trigger. I gained three life this turn, so I'm going to return Suture Priest from my graveyard to the battlefield. That's gonna hurt. And I will pass the turn to you, Jimmy. Okay, I will untap and upkeep. On your upkeep, I will untap one of my Sicarian Infiltrators. Okay, interesting. Uh, and then I will draw two cards for turn, one for the Anvil of the Garden, and then I will discard an Idol of Oblivion. I will go to combat, and Rachel, I'm okay. just gonna send one blue fairy at you to take the initiative. Okay, I have no flyers, so I will take one and go to 61. Okay, I'll take the initiative, and I too will venture deep into the Undercity. I'll look through my library and find an island and then put it into my hand. I will play my island as my land for turn, and then I'll sacrifice Command Beacon and put my commander into my hand from the command zone. Magnus is back! Pretty good. And then I will tap for one, two, three, four, and five, and replay my commander, Magnus the Red. Cool. That will trigger Suture Priest and you will lose a life. Yep. I will go to 27, and then uh, I'm going to tap for one blue, and I'm going to cast Windfall. Ooh. Ooh. In response, I'm going to pay three, cast a Shimmer Mirror, and then... You will lose one life from Suture Priest. We'll lose one life for Suture Priest. Going to 28, then I will cast a Kodatha Forge Master, paying five. I will lose another life from Suture Priest. 
going to 27. And then I will cast Flawless Maneuver for free because I control my commander. So all my creatures are indestructible until the end of turn. Okay, and then I'm good. All right, uh, any responses, Jamie? No. Any responses? No, no. Uh, to the windfall, yes. I'm going to activate the Underworld Cookbook, and I am going to discard a Worm Coil Engine to make a food token. Okay, good call. Now, the greatest number of cards in anyone's hand is... Eight. Eight. So Ooh. we will all discard our hands and draw eight cards. Okay. Okay. I discard the Mystic Reflection. I will discard a Manifold Key. I will discard five X spells and three Mana Thingies. <laughs> I will discard a Plains and... Elishnor? Oh, no! Elishnorn! Elishnorn! <laughs> okay. I like that. Let's draw our cards. <laughs> all right, we're all going to draw eight cards. This is the most cards I've had in hand all game. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pay one red and flashback Mystic Retrieval from my graveyard, mm -hmm. and I'm going to return Mystic Reflection to my hand. Cool. And then I will tap a blue and cast a Soul Ring. Mm -hmm. And then I will tap Soul Ring, and I will cast a Prismatic Lens. And then I think I just have to pass turn. The end of your turn, I'm going to activate Belisarius Call's second ability, tapping nine creatures to impulse nine through my deck and find an artifact yep. twice. That seems very good. So like, With the Goldotha, so scary. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I will reveal Shorakai, Genesis Engine. Okay. Uh-huh. Put that into my hand. Pretty good. The rest of these go on the bottom. I get to do it a second time because of my Illusionist Bracers. I will reveal a Thunderhawk gunship. Oh, that's bad. Okay, Jordan's actually kind of the threat now. Uh, um, you for sure. I don't really care. Then I will untap for turn. And then I will draw and draw a second one for Anvil of Bogarton. I will discard this Plains. And then I will tap Silver Mirror for one blue to float it. And then I will tap Koldotha Forge Master, sacrificing Silvermere and the two Sicarian Infiltrators. Okay. All right, here it goes. So now I can search my deck for an artifact, put it into the battlefield. I will put an Eldrazi Monument into play, and then I'm going to play Anointed Procession. Oh, interesting. So I'm going to move to combat. Okay. And Jamie, I'm going to send one Astartes Warrior at you, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to send the other three pointed at you, Jimmy. Why not? This player was 61 life in the Elish Norn in her graveyard. Because I don't think chipping down with uh, three, three threes is gonna really make the difference. You are nuts, dude. Okay, um, I'm just gonna take nine. Okay. Any responses? No. Okay, I will take three. I'm sorry, Jamie. Going to dead. I will take nine. Going to 18. Jamie. You get the initiative back, Jordan. I will take back the initiative. So, in the second room in the Undercity, I will scry two, and uh, I will keep one on top and one on bottom. Oh, I'm going to regret doing this with that Suture Priest on board. You're at 27, you're okay. Go nuts. Uh, but I am going to tap Belisarius Call, along with the Illusionist Bracers and the Eldrazi Monument, to make four more Astartes four more. Warriors. Oh, yeah. Because of Anointed an Procession. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take these off. It's gonna be eight total, and then I will lose four life. Going to 23. Jeez. Pass the turn. On your end step, I am going to sacrifice Angel of the Ruins to High Market, and I will gain one life to 62. And then I am going to pay one, and I'm going to activate the trading post to create a goat token, and I will pay one life to do so. Going to 61. When the goat enters the battlefield, I trigger Suture Priest, and I once again back up to 62. All right, uh, I will untap. On your upkeep, uh, because of the White Plume Adventure, Belisarius Call will untap. Uh, I will draw two for the Anvil of Bogarden, and I will discard a Arcane Signet. And then I'm going to activate the Trading Post, sacrificing the goat, uh, targeting my Angel of the Ruins in my graveyard. Okay. So I'll return the Angel of the Ruins to my hand. She's putting in work. I'm going to recast Angel of the Ruins. In response, I am going to cast Mana Drain. Oh, God. Mana Drain. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, can't do anything about Mana Drain. Oh. And then I'm going to play Lance. And then cast a Selfless Spirit. In response, I'm going to path to exile your Suture Priest. All right, um, okay. Suture Priest will be exiled. And I will go get a Plains. And I'll put it onto the battlefield tapped. 
hits. Rachel, I will allow you to hit me with Celestine to gain that three life if you have something good to get back with it. I think this Cathar Commando is our last hope. Yeah, so you can just swing at me, then I won't block. I appreciate it. So I am going to attack you with Celestine for three. Okay, I would just take three and go to 15. And because it has lifelink, I will go up to 65. And then I will move to my end step. At the end of your turn, I am going to Swords to Plowshares, Magnus the Red. You had all the one mana removal spells. In response, I'm going to cast Occult Epiphany. Yeah, I love this card. For uh, seven, with the additional from Prismatic Lens. And then in response, holding priority, I'm gonna float one more blue and I'm gonna cast Mystic Reflection. Ooh, so I'm gonna choose scary. Jordan's White Plume Adventurer as the next time a creature enters the battlefield enters a copy of that creature. Okay, in response, I'm gonna cast Disorder in the court, targeting my White Plume Adventurer and one of your fairies, which will exile those two target creatures, and then I get to investigate uh, two times because I exile two creatures with it. Okay, so I will exile one of my fairies. White Plume Adventure is exiled. Mystic Reflection will fizzle. So I will make two clues, but because of my anointed procession, I will actually make four clues. And then the Cult Epiphany will still happen for six, so I'll draw six cards. I'm gonna discard six cards, and I am discarding a sorcery, creature, instant, and an artifact and a land, so that's five different card types. That's gonna make five 1-1 one, one spirit creature tokens. I wish they were five, enter the initiatives. That would've been so sweet. That would've been sweet. Then uh, your Swords of Plowshares will resolve. Right. And Magnus will die, and I will gain four life, going to 19. All right. All right, now Celestine Ooh. will finally trigger. Uh, Celestine will finally trigger, and because I've only gained three life this turn, I can only return Kather Commando to the battlefield. Okay, take it away, Jimmy. Okay, untap. Uh, I will draw for turn, and I'll draw an extra card because of Amble of Bogarden. I will discard a land. I will start off by playing my land for turn. It's an Urza Saga. It's gonna enter on one. Okay, so I need to get some amount of immunity from you if I'm gonna swing at Jordan with everything, because that's 10 damage. But you will one have to one help me blow up his Yeah, I mean, that's, monument. that's part of my deal, is I'm, like, I expended a lot of resources to right. do that. I won't send damage at you for, I mean, for certainly next turn. Okay, just one turn's fine, I think. Okay. That, that's, okay. I'm gonna go to combat. All right, before you go to combat, uh, I will pay one and I will sacrifice the Kather Commando and attempt to blow up the Eldrazi Monument. The Eldrazi Monument will blow up. Oh my god. Makes me very sad. Okay, I'm gonna go to combat and Jordan, I'm gonna swing at you with five of my 1-1 one, one fairy tokens. They're in the air? Yep. There's nothing I can do about that. I will take five going to 18. And then I'll take the initiative from you, Jordan? Yep. And I'll move into the second room and I'll scry two. I'm gonna put both of those on the bottom of my library. Okay, and then in my second main phase, I will pay 11 mana and recast my commander, Magnus the Red. Woo, that was pretty good. Magnus is out again. <laughs> all right. I used all my removal. And then I'm going to tap the talisman for a blue and take a damage, going to 18. And I'm going to cast Irenicus's Vile Duplication on Magnus the Red. Sweet! Yes. <laughs> I love this card. <laughs> so oh cool. man! Now wow. I have two Magnuses, meaning my instance and sorceries are now one less to cast for each creature token, or two less to cast for each creature token. So they cost Seems 22 really good. less. 22 wow. less. Wow. Yeah, it's going to create a copy. Yikes! And then y'all are going to love this. I'm going to tap one red, and <laughs> I'm going to cast March of Reckless Joy for X is equal to 20. Sweet! Oh, yeah! No. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Just gonna win. Any responses? I have no responses. Okay, right. let's see. All right, I'm gonna exile the top 20 cards in my library. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna exile all 20 of these cards. Can and I I'm going to them? choose, yeah, I'm gonna choose one card to play right now. Okay. And that is gonna be Release the Gremlins. Yeah, that's so good. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna cast Release the Gremlins for X is equal to 10, because I have uh, spells reductions of 20 mana currently. Pretty good. Sounds right. And then I'll tap the Volcanic Island for that last red, and I'll choose 10 artifacts to blow up. Choose your targets. So here are my 10 artifacts. Jordan from your board is gonna be Condolta Forge Master, Shimmer Mirror, your Commander, Illusionist Bracers, and Rings of Bright Hearth. And Rachel from your board is gonna be Soul Ring, Pearl Medallion, Underworld Cookbook, Lightning Greaves, and Trading Post. Oh, that's so bad, oh my god. All right. In response, while I still have Belisarius Call, Mm -hmm. I am going to tap call eight Astartes Warriors and the Shimmer Mirror so that I can dig nine through my deck and look for an artifact. Yep. All right. I reveal a Voltaic Key, put it in my hand, the rest go into the bottom. 
And I'm gonna do that twice because of Illusionist Bracers. All right. One more time. I will reveal an Arcane Signet, put it in my hand. And then, uh, because I have Shimmer Mirror, which lets me cast artifacts at instant speed, I am going to cast Voltaic Key, paying one. Yep. Then, I will tap Voltaic Key and pay my last mana to untap Koldotha Forge Master. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Then I will tap Koldotha Forge Master. I'm going to sacrifice Belsarius Call, Koldotha Forge Master, and Illusionist Bracers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Belsarius Call will go to my command zone and I will put a thousand year elixir into play off of Kodotha Forge Master. Before the uh, release of Gremlins resolves, I'm going to activate the cookbook and I'm going to discard a Millikan to create another food token. Okay, finally, release of Gremlins will resolve. So let's blow up them artifacts. And I'll get 10 to two Gremlins. And that's gonna do it for me. Well, we're not dead, which is pretty shocking. We're not. Uh, we do have one turn to deal with Jimmy. On my end step, Jordan, your white plume adventurer will return to the battlefield. Yep, it will bounce back down and I will get the initiative. There you go. Again, I will take the initiative so I can actually, is there anything important to goad? You could send Celestine to her death? Yeah, I'm gonna goad Celestine, why not? Sure. All right, and then it is my turn. I will untap. Because I have the initiative, I will move through the dungeon to the archives and draw a card. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. And then, because of the anvil of Bogarten, I will draw an extra card and discard one card. The card I will discard is Arcane Signet. Okay, so on my first main phase, I have seven mana drain mana available. Oh god, I forgot about that. So I will use one of the mana that I have floating to uh, tap Mind Stone, pave its one, sacrifice it, draw a card. Okay. Then I am going to pay two, and I will pay for Treasure Vault, X equal to one. I will tap it, I will sacrifice it, and I will make two treasures. Normally it would just make one, but because I have Anointed Procession, it's gonna make two treasures. All right. I think casting the commander is not what is a path to victory for me right now. Okay. Interesting. So I will play Shorakai, Genesis Engine. Okay. All right. I will tap Shorakai and pay one, which will be with one of the ones I have floating, so I'm down to five, and I will draw two cards cards and discard a card. I will discard Ashnod's altar and I will make two pilots. Then I will pay one, taking this down to four, and I will tap Voltaic Key to untap Shurikai Genesis Engine. Then I will pay one to tap Shurikai again and I will draw two. We're cooking. And I will discard an Azorius Signet. And that, that will make two more pilots from Shurikai. So that's four total pilots. Then I will tap three of these pilots to crew Shurikai. Mm -hmm. Then Shurikai is a creature. So I will use one of my floating mana to go down to three. Oh God. And I will use Thousand Year Elixir to untap Shurikai. All right. Oh, then I'm going to pay one more, going down to two floating mana to tap Shurikai. Oh. Draw two cards, and I will discard Seed of the Synod. I have three untapped pilots now. I'll make two more pilots, thanks to Shorakai plus Anointed Procession. Okay, maybe he's done, though. Then I will spend these two. Oh, no. <laughs> and then one to play Mirden Besieged. Oh, my God! Aiming Phyrexian. At the beginning of your instep, draw a card, then discard a card. If there are 15 or more artifacts cards in your graveyard, Target opponent loses the game. Yep. There are 14 artifacts in your graveyard right now, Jordan. Okay, in that case, Rachel, I am going to move to combat. Yeah. And I'm going to attack you with eight 2-2 two, two Astartes. Well, I can't imagine losing this Selfless Spirit is the correct play here, so I will take 16 Astartes damage. Okay. And I will go to 49. And then I will play a Glacial Fortress, which will come into play untapped because I have a Plains or an Island. Mm -hmm. And then I will end the turn. At the beginning of my instep, I will draw a card with Mirrodin Besiege. And I will discard. Oh no, not an artifact, no way. Idol of Oblivion. Oh, that's oh. Ooh, oh, what a apropos. flavorful choice. <laughs> <laughs> and the Oblivion will be pointed at you, Jimmy. Yep, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> and then I die to the Phyrexian side of Mirrodin Besieged. <gasps> okay, Rachel, it's your turn. Uh-huh, I will untap. On your upkeep, the White Plume Adventurer is going to trigger and I will untap a pilot. Mm -hmm. Also on your upkeep, I'm gonna tap one blue and play Pongify on your commander. Oh boy. I will respond and I will sacrifice the Selfless Spirit. Okay. And give it indestructible. 
All right. I and would like a monkey, please. You get a monkey. Thank you. For me? Free monkey. Uh, I will draw two for the anvil of Bogarden. I will discard land tax. Ooh, okay. Um, I will go to combat. You got and it. And I'm going to send Celestine in the air at you, Jordan. Okay, she gets through. Okay. Actually, you know what? Just in case, I'm going to crack a clue in response. Okay. So I can draw a card. So I'm down to three. Yeah, and it gets through. Okay. So I'll take three damage, putting me down to 15. And that puts me at 12 commander damage, which is feeling like it might matter. Okay. When I deal damage to you, I also take the initiative. Yep, you got it. And because Celestine has the lifelink, I will gain three. Go to 52. So I think uh, I'm going to move into the forge. And I'm gonna put two plus one counters on Celestine. Commander damage is a possibility. I need 10 more to do it. Okay, I'm gonna cast Daxos, Blessed by the Sun. Nice. Then I'm going to follow it up by casting Ranger Captain of Eos. Oh. When Ranger Captain enters the battlefield, I gain one life from Daxos. Going to 53. Uh, okay, I will search my library for a creature card. And I search for a benevolent bodyguard. I will put it into my hand. Play planes as my land for turn. And then I will cast the benevolent bodyguard. When it enters the battlefield, I gain another one from Daxos. Going to 54. Then I will pay two, and I'm gonna sacrifice a food to gain three more life. Going 57. And then I will move to my end step. Celestine will trigger, and because I've gained more than seven life, I will return Angel of the Ruins to the battlefield. Yep, that's good. When Angel of the Ruins enters the battlefield, I will exile Mirrodin Besiege and Shorakai. Okay, in response, I will crew Shorakai with three of these pilots. And then I'm going to pay two to cast Sea Tree Shelter and give Shorakai protection from white until the end of turn. Uh, I will respond and I will cast Sword Splashers targeting oh. Shorakai. Okay, Shorakai is exiled. Okay. Oh, wow. I will gain eight life going up to 23. Uh, if Angel of the Ruins uh, ETB resolves. Mirrodin Besieged is exiled, sadly. Okay. Angel of the Ruins enter the battlefield, which triggers Saxo, so I will gain one more life. And go to 58. Oh my gosh. All right, I will untap everything. Uh, and Jordan, on your upkeep, I'm going to sacrifice Ranger Captain in uh, Eos. So I can only cast creatures? Just creatures this turn. Oh boy, oh boy, that's why the card's uh, so good. That is brutal. And, wow. And uh, when it dies, it triggers Daxos. I do gain one more life and go to 59. All right, I will draw two, one for uh, Anvil of Bogarden, and I will discard a uh, Hollowed Fountain. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm going to pay two and play the Reality Chip, and then I will pay three to equip the Reality Chip. Very good. To a pilot, or to White Plume Adventure, why not? So I get to look at the top card of my library now, and then I'm going to pay two to play an Ethereum Sculptor. Okay. And then I will pay three to play Solemn Simulacrum. There you go. So I will find an island with a Psalm Simulacrum, mm -hmm. which will enter the battlefield tapped. Oh boy. Now I get to look at the top card of my deck again. So I'm gonna move to combat. I'm gonna attack with all eight of my Astartes Warriors and all six of my pilots. Bunch of boys. So I'll, I'll block with uh, Daxos, the ape, and Angel of the Runes. Okay. And I have to take the rest. So I'm down to five Astartes. I will take 16 once again and go to 43. <laughs> and then I will take the initiative. Yep. which will complete the dungeon. Reveal the top 10 cards of my library. Put a creature card from among them in the battlefield with three 1-1 one -one counters on it. It gains hexproof Dang. until my next turn. So pretty good. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right. I will play the Vidalcan Aether Mage. It will get three plus one plus one counters on it. And the rest of the cards will go in the bottom of my library. And it has hexproof until my next turn. Do you have a new top card to look at? Let's see what I got. All right, I will pass the turn. All right, I will untap. All of my creatures will untap because of White Plume Adventure and I have completed a dungeon. Nice. Okay, uh, I will draw two and I will discard a planes. Commander damage. I well, I need there. to do nine damage to him because he's at 12 commander damage. So I'm going to pay three and I'm going to cast Heliod Suncrowned. Oh, Heliod's gonna make your commander bigger if you can gain some life. He's good. Uh, when Heliod enters the battlefield, it triggers Daxos and I gain a life. Mm -hmm. Going to 44. Okay. I'm gonna put another counter on Celestine. And then I'm going to pay one. I'm gonna cast a Sarah Ascendant. Sarah Ascendant enters the battlefield. I gain one. Uh, it triggers Heliod, and I'm gonna put another counter on Celestine. 
Ooh. I'm going to play a Kabira Crossroads as my land for turn. When it enters the battlefield, I'm going to gain two and go to 47. Okay. That triggers Heliod. Gonna go to five counters on Celestine. Eight damage, one more. Uh oh. I'm gonna go to combat and I'm gonna send the Angel of the Ruins and Celestine at you in the air. I will activate High Market and I will sacrifice this ape token. And I will gain a single life, which will trigger Heliod, and I will put the last plus one counter on Celestine to do nine commander damage. Well, okay, first thing I will do is pop these two treasures and crack a clue. Mm -hmm. So it's down to two. Draw that card. Yep. We well, knew what that was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know what they are. Yeah. Mm. You can crack one more clue. Let's crack it just to find out. Crack yeah. it! Oh my god, I don't have a way to suddenly get three mana, do I? <laughs> um, um, um. Creatures to untap does not matter. You don't have a mana positive rock to untap. We'll oh take no! keys, not gonna do it. Clues, you don't have any treasures, you only have pilots. I don't know what's on top. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't oh think you have it. I don't have enough to actually cast it. Oh my god. So I will just show you what is on top. Yeah. Which is Teferi's protection. Oh! <laughs> and then it would have been will... so good. GG. Good game. What a game. Oh good game. game. I win. Victory. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! All right, wow, well, this was an amazing game. A lot of twists and turns. That was crazy. Yeah, it was Nuts. It was epic. Uh, it definitely wasn't over after one punch was thrown. Oh. There was a lot of punches thrown. There were so many punches thrown, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. You never knew who was gonna win, except Jamie was kind of behind uh, kind of a lot. So, uh, yeah. He kept taking damage from the Sylvan Library. Yeah. That's, I know you always say, he had take to. damage from Sylvan Library, that's what you gotta do. He wasn't behind because he took damage from that's Sylvan fair, that's Library. Fair. That's not the, that wasn't his problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But congratulations to Rachel. Is man, such a cool game. Pulling out an epic win there. Of course, Rachel's well known for it. Thanks everybody for watching. Remember, if you want to support our content, cardkingdom.com slash command is the best place to go to pick up your magic products, singles, anything at all. They really do have the best service in the entire magic retailer space. They're going to get you your cards super fast. They ship them right away. I mean, in amazing speeds once you place the order. And also, they have good service all around. So if something were to go wrong with your order, they go above and beyond to make sure that it's right. And I know I've gone through other services before, and sometimes you can have trouble like fixing orders that were incorrect or whatever. It takes a long time, which is frustrating because you want to get your stuff. It's the same thing about shipping speed, where most of the time I'm excited to get my cards and use them and get them mm. into play. And so Card Kingdom really, they, they know that you want the cards in your hands, and they really work hard to get them to you as fast as possible. Um, so cardkingdom.com slash command, again, is our affiliate link. And that really supports the show and gets you the magic cards you know you want. Yeah, and again, huge thank you to our other sponsor, Ultra Pro. Ultra Pro just has the best deck boxes, best sleeves, best play mats for everything. Uh, Ultra Pro it has the license with Wizards to be able to get all of the art onto the play mats. And there's just such a huge variety of stuff that you can get from Ultra Pro. If you go to ultrapro.com, use the affiliate code command, ultrapro.com slash command. Uh, they'll oftentimes have sales oh, all, yeah, the all the time on there. Yeah. So there could be a product that you never even knew existed that you look at that and you think, whoa, that's cool. Wait, it's on sale? I'll take that, please. Yes, thank you. They often have pretty crazy deals yeah. uh, where you're like, oh, geez, I, if you need binders, sometimes you'll just find it on there. Like, I should pick up like four or five right now because that's the normal price of one or two of those. So yeah, ultrapro.com slash command. Such a great resource and they make awesome products that we all use here in the office all the time. Definitely. Yeah, I want to talk about one thing real quick uh, for those people that are watching this sort of around the time it came out. Uh, there's an event, Magic 30, you probably heard about it happening in Las Vegas oh, yeah. uh, in just a couple of days from the time this video is being released. And you may not have heard, but we're doing something kind of fun and special uh, at the event. We have on Friday night, the first day of the event, which is the 28th of October, we're gonna take over the main stage there in the, in the venue and we are going to do what we're calling Game Nights Live which is going to yeah. be a big live show, live commander gameplay on the stage in front of a huge audience. We've got all kinds of cool stuff planned. We've been working on this show for a couple of months now. Oh, yeah. Our team can... has been like hard at work just yep. like trying to get this thing together. And man, oh man, some of the stuff that I've seen, it's going to be real sick. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a big good time. So yeah. if you are going to be at Magic 30, then make sure that you are 
in the main area on near the main stage uh, at the venue around 2 p.m. Well, 2 p.m. is the start time. It's going to go from like 2 to 7, I think. We're also going to be revealing the Brothers War Precon Commander decks oh. in a very special <laughs> way at that event. We're going to be playing the decks before they've been revealed to the public. So as we play cards that nobody's ever seen before, we're going to stop, show them to the audience. And then uh, any cards that don't get played because you don't play all the cards in your deck in a yeah. single game, we're going to show off um, after that first game so that you will get the full reveal of both decks during that. Uh, and uh, it is going to be available on uh, stream. There is like a, I think you buy a badge to like an online version of the convention yeah. and, you, and you're able to watch that. So I'm not sure exactly how that works. We're going to have the links in the show notes if we get those from Wizards. But it, for sure, if you're there, you should come say hi and check us out at the show. And we'll be there all weekend. Yeah. Uh, almost our whole team's going to be there. So look for us. We have swag to give away, things like that. I'd like to think that uh, we're going to be the main event there. Yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> I, I think so. It's the opening night. It's the main stage. We're the main event. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you, if not at this live event, at one in the future. And, uh, of course, hopefully, you'll see us very, very soon because you've subscribed and hit the bell notification and all Ding. the things that YouTube tells you to do. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks everyone. <laughs> Bye. Peace.